Unfortunately, three out of four Americans over the age of 50 report that they're terrified about this aspect of retirement, and it's influencing one of the most important decisions they have to make regarding retirement. So let's go for a walk and let's talk about what this fear is, what the topic is, and how it's influencing their decision. According to the 2023 Nationwide Retirement Institute survey, 75% of adults over 50 say that they're fearful that Social Security will run out of money in their lifetime. And this important decision that we all need to make at some point is when we start taking Social Security. For most of us, we can start taking it at 62. Our full retirement age for most people watching is gonna be between 66 and 67. And our benefits will continue to increase by eight percentage points past full retirement age until we reach age 70. And because people are concerned about Social Security running out of money, almost a third of all Americans take their Social Security at the earliest age possible. The belief is if they've already started taking Social Security, they'll be protected from any cuts. And, and candidly, I don't know. You know, I'm not saying that that's not going to happen, but let me, let me share with you some facts. Two thirds of all Americans claim Social Security before their full retirement age. And for many of us, Social Security is gonna be a very important foundation for our retirement plan. So getting that payment as high as possible is important if it makes sense. Now, if you, if you have a health issue, if you need the money, uh, I fully understand that. I just don't want you making the decision out of fear and I want you understanding what the facts are and what's likely to happen. So, so let's jump in. I say likely to happen. Let me, let me just share some data with you um, that I, I, I think is information that you want to have as you're looking at this decision. Now, first, um, if you take Social Security at the earliest age possible at 62, you're gonna get 70% of your full retirement age benefits. So again, at, let's say that somebody was gonna get, two, the average Social Security check is just under $2,000. So let's call it $2,000. At 62, you're gonna get 70% of that benefit, so you're only gonna get $1,400 in, instead of $2,000. And then if you wait until age 70, every year it goes up by eight percentage points. And because it's cumulative, um, it actually goes from $2,000 to a little bit more than $2,400 a month, almost $2,500 a month, $2,480 if you wait to, to age 70. Now, there's no reason to wait currently past the age of 70 because the benefits do not increase anymore once you reach age 70. So, you know, in, in the past, people would take Social Security early because maybe they had a health issue and they knew they weren't going to live that long or they needed the money. But now, um, a majority of people say that the top reason they're, according to a Schroeder survey, the top reason people are taking Social Security early is because they're worried that Social Security might run out of money. So Janet Yellen chairs the Social Security uh, Trust Funds Board. Um, Janet Yellen is the Secretary of the Treasury. And each year she puts out a report from the trustees sharing, you know, this is what the health of the Social Security system is. And two years ago, she put out a report and said that the trust fund was gonna run out of money in 2034, which is a decade away from as I record this now, the most recent one that she put out says that the trust fund runs out of money in 2035. However, she goes on to say that um, without the, the funds from the trust fund, current taxes should be sufficient to fund 70 to 80% of the benefits. So those are what the facts are. And I want to point out that, you know, again, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know what's going to happen, but I think it's unlikely that the Social Security is just going to go away. It may reduce in benefits, 
Um, we people that are currently working, their Social Security may be taxed. That right now it it caps out at a little under 169,000 a year. So people that are making a million dollars a year only pay Social Security on the first 100, roughly 169,000 uh, dollars, and that might change. There's a lot of things that could change, and you know, seniors are. Uh, one of the strongest voting blocks in the United States, and obviously Social Security is enormously important to seniors. We've spent our entire life paying into the system. We were promised uh, that we would get money back. It, was, it would provide a safety net for us. Um, and so obviously we're going to fight hard to, to make sure that safety net stays in place. I, again, I don't know what's going to happen. I do know that uh, there's been proposals on both sides of the aisle uh, to shore up Social Security. Um, there's a Democrat from Minnesota uh, who, I believe it's Angie Clark, that uh, passed a bill, and it didn't pass, it proposed a bill called You Earned It, You Keep It, which would eliminate the taxation on Social Security. As it, as it stands now, many people, 50% of their Social Security is, is taxable and, and uh, for fewer, but increasingly more people, 85% of their Social Security uh, can be taxed. And when you think about it, this is money that we put into the system. So it's really a return of our money. So I think a strong case could be made for why that should not be taxable income. Be that as it may, um, that's what the current law is. It was first passed. Uh, Ronald Reagan uh, made, uh, signed the bill into law that made 50% of Social Security taxable. And Bill Clinton signed a second law into place that made up to 85% of Social Security. So regardless of your political leanings, both sides of the party have, have done some things to make it taxable. And again, my thoughts are, you know, at, at a minimum, the taxes coming in will be sufficient, according to Janet Yellen, will be sufficient to fund 70 to 80% of those benefits and we do still have a decade, which unfortunately, when it comes to political situations and, and Social Security is a big political uh, situation, um, a decade is not long. Uh, but the reality is oftentimes the can gets kicked down the road and, until we're at the point where we have to make a decision. So as I, as I said, uh, the Democrats have made a proposal, Angie Clark, I believe is her name on the Democrat side, um, that would reduce the taxation, but it would also um, reduce the, eliminate the, the cap, kind of uh, eliminate the, the cap on Social Security. It would, it would come back into play from 250,000 and above. So over time, eventually that uh, cap on taxes on Social Security would go away. The Republicans have also made uh, some proposals, uh, including uh, how spousal benefits are calculated I've done past videos on, on both of those bills. This is not a political channel, that's not my goal. My goal is to help you make the right decision for you. Um, and as I said, the, the Schroeder survey said that the top reason that people are choosing to take Social Security early is because they're worried Social Security is gonna go away. Uh, the number two is you know because people need the money or because health reasons. Uh, and the number two and the number three reasons make a lot of sense to me. The number one reason being fearful that Social Security is going to go away. I just want you to be thoughtful and, and think about that twice, three times. You know, it's the carpenter's adage, right? Measure twice, uh, cut once. So again, I don't have a crystal ball. But when you think about the difference in that payment, the average Social Security payment being about 2000 a month, if you take it early, that's going to be $1,400 a month. And if you do find yourself living to your mid-80s, your 90s, um, you know, for most of us, Social Security is the only source of income that we have um, that is going to be adjusted for inflation. It makes, it, it makes our Social Security payment enormously important because even if you have a, a pension from uh, a private company uh, or even from the state or the fed uh, the federal government many pensions are not indexed for inflation so if you live 30 or 40 years that pension payment that you're getting today will feel like a fraction of what the purchasing power will feel like a fraction 
of what it feels like today. So the fact that Social Security is indexed for inflation is really our protection against longevity. Now, you know, as long as we're healthy, many of us want to be able to, to live, uh, to have a long, healthy period of time in retirement. But we also need to have the income coming in to support us. Now, there's ways that you can do that with your investment accounts. Uh, for instance, one of the things that I've talked about is is a portfolio of dividend-paying stocks. And uh, you've got to be super careful with dividend companies. You've got to choose wisely. But if you choose carefully, historically, strong dividend-paying companies, companies that are paying their dividends out of operating cash flow because they have great comp, they have a great business and they're sharing part of that profits with, with uh, their investors. Historically, those types of companies raise their dividends at a rate faster than inflation. So the good thing is just to throw out a number, let's say you're getting a thousand dollars a month from a portfolio of dividend stocks. In five years, it's still gonna feel like you have the purchasing power of a thousand dollars a month or more. Again, this isn't financial advice. I don't know your situation. And I certainly don't know what's gonna happen with Social Security, but I wanna put this on your radar screen. So there are ways to protect income streams from your private, from your individual investments from inflation. And that's important. Most pensions do not keep up with inflation, do, are not indexed for inflation, but Social Security is. And because of that, it could be an important component to longevity insurance, longevity protection, should you find yourself living, you know, if you have a family history of, of people living in their, their 90s or maybe even into 100 or more, having that, that payment that is indexed for inflation should be powerful. So I want to encourage you to think twice, to talk to some advisors so that you can make the right decision for you and your family on when to take Social Security versus making that decision out of fear. And I want you to make a decision based on what the reality is. And that's one of the reasons I made this video up here, which talks about the reality of what does the average American get in income in retirement? It's kind of a part two to this video. Average retirement income in America. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in there. Bye-bye.